Hi, everybody. Um, I feel like I've had a few weeks off from these, um, but I don't know if that's true. I mean, usually, um, well, I'm joined by my um, amazing weird friends behind me from the Screen of Hans office here in the Grover Centre. Um, you may recognise my Chip Fort Man from um, Fortune Cookies if you were uh, kind of lucky enough to come to our cast and crew screening. Um, usually I do quite a long introduction because I can't help myself um, with talking, but I'm going to try and get straight into it today. However, just before I start, Oh, the the uh, the winner clapperboard trophies are here. Um, Panavision, who uh, did you see the logo? I can't do the backwards. There we go. Panavision provide these for us, um, and we absolutely love them. They are gorgeous. They are real clapperboards. You can use them if you win one for your next film, or you can just put it on your wall. I mean, I think they're too beautiful to use. Um, but yeah, huge thanks to Panavision, um, who were you know an absolute world leader um, in camera production and higher um, and who are just really really amazingly supportive to us um this us little tiny screen northampton northampton film festival here in northampton um but yes without further ado i'm going to bring our guest in today um so today we have one of our um, northampton film festival judges um we um we spoke to Callie Cook, I think it was two weeks ago, who is one of our other judges. But today I've got Kerry Kosh here, um, who you may know from BBC Radio Northampton. Hi, Kerry. Hi. How are you? Yeah, not so bad, thank you. How are you? Not, well, well, we're we're shooting um, a television drama next week, and so we are in full pre-production mode. So if I don't make any sense, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Do you know what? Firstly, let me just say what a big fan of the Clapperboard um, Award I am. They yeah. look fancy. Yeah, they're, I think... <laughs> They're really fancy. I think there's a lot of film festivals that don't have those. <laughs> Definitely so, not. No. So, yeah, we win in that respect. <laughs> um, but, yes, you are one of our judges um, this year for Northampton Film Festival. Um, what what convinced you to go, yes, I'd like to judge a film competition? Do you know what? For me, I've always been interested in film, in documentary, in television. And I've always kind of been one of those people who has always wondered how things are made, especially when you see like a really fancy production or something happening right in front of your eyes. I'm always like, oh, what's going on behind the camera? Do you know what I mean? And I always look at the techniques and things. And even since I was a kid, I used to research different camera angles, get like loads of books, look on the Internet. Um, and just to figure out like how I could become a better filmmaker myself. And I think the opportunity just came up to watch a load of films. And I don't think there's anything worse than that, really. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Or anything better in the world, either way, um, to just get to sit there and watch other people's creative work and to see what they've done. Because I think as a filmmaker, there's so much you can learn from different people's filmmaking styles, even if it's not like your own. And there's so many different creative points that I enjoy about watching people make something, you know, start to finish, that it's just so interesting to me. It always has been. Well, yeah, because obviously we, we people may well know you locally, um, particularly, you know, particularly for BBC Radio Northampton it being radio and not obviously not you know film but you've done lots of interesting things I believe with cameras and in, in film and documentary stuff do you want to tell us a little bit about that stuff yeah so I actually started out before I went to university I was about 17 18 and I had no idea what I wanted to do at that point and I remember thinking oh I always want to do something creative but I'm just not sure what that creative thing is it turns out that creative thing is talking on the radio but before I got to that point um, I was really interested in like the YouTube phenomenon because YouTube was really up and coming when I was a teenager and it's not anything like the platform is now where you learn everything off it. Um, back then, influencers and vloggers were a fairly like new thing. Zoella was kind of probably the leader of all vloggers. You know, she was like the big one and Alfie Day's Pointless Blog. Um, and it was just so interesting to like, get involved in that. So what I did was I started contacting local uh, YouTubers that I knew and I started actually making videos with them. So I learned to edit. I learned different styles of software. Um, I learned how to make short films. I learned how to edit using stuff like Premiere Pro, Avid and basically iMovie when I started out, I think. Maybe at one point Windows Media Player Editor. Like yeah, loads yeah. of different, <laughs> <laughs> loads of different uh, mediums I was like using to learn how to edit. And uh, then I got the opportunity to actually make YouTube videos with a couple of people who had more than half a million subscribers. Um, so basically they were filming their footage and they would move on to the next video to film. But in the meantime, they would send all their footage to me and I would cut it together and make it look good. 
I designed like title cards for them, animations, different stuff like that. And uh, I just used to love doing it. And that's how it kind of started for me with film. And then when I went to university, I kind of decided I wanted to carry that on. But I was always interested in audio documentaries as well and making like things sound good because I was obsessed with sound. If somebody ever sent me a video and the sound was rubbish on it, I'd be like, oh, no. Um, But then I got a bit obsessed with sound. So then I started looking into audio documentary from there and trying to really craft how to tell a story properly using film, using audio, using loads of different mediums. And that's kind of how it started for me, really. That's it's really weird to think that that that's how I started. But I think that taught me so many different skills um, that I could then evolve it and do more complicated things. So I think it was a great way to get into it. Yeah. And I mean, I think a lot of filmmakers, and I probably include myself in this, um, you know, get quite obsessed about the picture and sound absolutely can be something that isn't given the same weight. But actually, when you watch a film and the sound is really bad, it is unwatchable um, because that is so distracting. Whereas I think I feel like you can forgive more in a, you know, too wobbly cam or a bad picture. Um, So I suppose one of the things you're going to be looking out for on all of our film festival entries when you're judging them is good sound. Yeah, definitely. I think sound is so, so important. I think a lot of the time people can overlook sound and think, oh, well, it looks beautiful, but does it sound beautiful? Is there a good use of, you know, establishing a location, for example? Because if you're in a coffee shop, I want to hear all the sounds of the coffee shop. I want to hear the clashing of plates. I want to hear the cups banging down. I want to hear the chatter that you would hear. You know, I really want to be able to hear the location to kind of establish where we're talking about you know whether that's a short film whether that's a documentary I think audio is so important for just establishing those things yeah definitely um yeah I've definitely been guilty in my time when I was kind of location managing of picking a few really bad locations next to train lines or under Heathrow uh, you know flight paths We've and stuff. Done it. <laughs> but there we go uh, such is life um but yeah I mean I've, I've maybe I've already answered it but I mean what do you think makes a good film like what are you going to be probably most impressed with from these entries that we've sent you do you know what for me although I am somebody when I make films I really do focus on the shots looking nice actually for me it's the story the hardest most difficult thing for me as a filmmaker and this is what I respect the most is sometimes putting that perfection or that need for perfection aside to be able to tell the story better like for me I used to whip out the camera and be like oh this shot's perfect this is so aesthetic this looks great but in the background the actual story would be happening and I'd be missing it because I'd be so busy focusing on making the film look good but actually I could have captured something so important over there um so for me the story is the heart of everything how you tell it how the person watching engages with it how you make me feel you know is it a motive have you told it in a chronological way or have you kind of mixed it up a little bit and gone, you know, started at the present day? Have you moved backwards? You know, I think it's so interesting to see how different people tell different stories. So I think that's really going to come through um, for me as a judge, you know, how the story has reached out to me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We always go on and on um, about, you know, we know that we know that as we all do, you know, filmmakers get hung up on not having the kit, not you know not having done it before whatever else that's why we started doing these 48 hour film challenges actually which you know are very much um just going don't worry it is all about the story what well, taking you know taking this theme and coming up with something really interesting as an idea and we'll all forgive some ropey cam work, work if you're funny or you're emotive as you say you know we all we're all human at the end of the day and we love we love hearing yeah. other human stories <laughs> well, definitely Going back a little bit, um, because I ask everyone this, um, because I find it really interesting. Um, But you said, you know, you thought you wanted to do something creative. When you were kind of at school, did you think, right, creative career, that's going to be for me? No, it's really weird because I don't think I ever imagined what I was going to do at school. Firstly, because I'm South Asian and because I'm from a South Asian background, uh, creative careers are not really something that tend to happen within our culture. Like we're very much encouraged to get something that is financially secure, something that will always guarantee it will bring in money, you know, whether that's to be an accountant, whether it's to be a doctor, a dentist, 
just something you know it was always a case of money and as bad as it is to say is that money is often status within our cultures so a creative job was never really seen as an option when I was younger um but I've been quite fortunate in that I kind of discovered that I had the passion to do something creative and to be honest with you the creative industry as we all know is not the most guaranteed you know not everybody does it for the money because <laughs> let's yeah. face it if we were all here for the money <laughs> no um but it's it's one of those industries that I think it, it brings me joy every day and I think that's the most important thing when you're looking at what you want to do in life like what brings you joy you know a lot of people do get joy out of accountancy out of finances out of HR working with people being a communicator you know loads of different things but I think the creative aspect of everything always just brought me a lot of enjoyment so for me I think although it wasn't initially there for me as in as a kid you know it wasn't always presented to me as a job option or something to do and um, over time I kind of established my own path and I think that's the weirdest thing when I look back like, I don't think there were any points where I specifically was like right now I want to be a creative or now I want to work in film in radio or anything like that I just think naturally it happened over time I just realized that these are the things that I'm actually all right at um, so maybe I can actually do them for a job. And it materialized that talking was the thing that I did for a job. Amazing. Yeah. Well, yes, I think this thing, I think, uh, you know, one of the things, um, you know, we're trying to do the film festival and with a, with a new element this year, which is the North Hans Film and TV Expo and the Careers Fair is very much to demystify what those jobs could be. Like, you know, I think maybe we don't see what those jobs are they're not necessarily presented in school and so you kind of don't really know what you could go off and do I mean so how mm. how did you how did how did radio come to you well that was a really random thing so I always used to listen to the radio as a kid I was so passionate about new music I remember on social media there used to be these friendship grids that people used to tag their mates in you know most likely to make you laugh most likely to be a clown and I was always tagged in, most likely to recommend good music. And I never quite fitted the dots together at that point. And when I was like 16, 17, 18, I was not the best behaved person. I was always a bit of a class clown, always a bit of an idiot, just messing around, you know. And I probably didn't take my education at the time as seriously as what I should have. And I got to like 17, 18, and I kind of decided, I don't know what I want to do. Like, everybody's leaving school and college. I've got no idea what I want to do. So I went and got a job in transport for years on end, like years. And I worked in an office nine to five, Monday to Friday for like five years after I left school because I had no idea where I wanted to be in life. And then I went, I decided when I was like 24, I was sat in my office job and I was like, do you know what? I'm really not enjoying this. Like, this is not, this is not for me. This is not what I see myself doing for the rest of my life. And that's where the creative thing really came back in. And I went to uni a year later and I was a bit older than everyone else because I hadn't decided what I wanted to do at 17, 18. And I went on a friend's radio show. She had a student radio station slot on a Wednesday afternoon. She used, used to chat rubbish for like an hour. It didn't matter what she was saying, but she was having so much fun doing it. And she asked me, do I want to be a guest on her show? And I was like, yeah, all right then. You know, it's not probably going to be for me. I'm not going to be very good at it. What am I going to say? It's going to interest people. And I sat in front of the mic and I was really nervous because I was like, oh, it's the radio. You know, even though like yeah. your mum and your goldfish are listening to student radio. And um, I just sat down and I just got this feeling that I really enjoyed being sat where I was sat in front of a microphone. And from then on, I just knew I had to kind of do it a bit more. But at that point, I still didn't think it was a job. I still thought, oh, you know, it's a bit of fun. It's something I do on the side or whatever. And it wasn't until probably about two or three years of doing it that I actually thought maybe I could do this for a job. Um, but at that point, you always think, how do I how do I get into it? Like, how do I, without the thousands of people in the country who want to be radio presenters, how do I be a radio presenter like how does it happen you know how do I get from being a little like student sat in a box talking to myself and a couple of listeners how do I get from there to somewhere like Radio One which would maybe be the dream for most radio presenters and yeah it's just it's been a really weird path and it's a really weird journey but I think for me the biggest thing was actually saying out loud I want to be a radio presenter and I'm going to make it happen 
And, you know, I had to sit there and think how I was going to make it happen, basically. And through, I guess, a bit of mixture of luck and being in the right place at the right time and taking opportunities when they've been offered to me, um, I've somehow got here, I guess. Well, yeah, and that's that's a big thing. Like, the, yeah, trying stuff, taking opportunities, like you say. Um, I had kind of, it feels like I had quite a similar thing in that I went to university and was doing a politics degree um, um, and <laughs> completely by accident, you know, went along to a filmmaking thing um, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I hate film. I'm not interested. No, no, no. And went along to this club, made a film, was like, right, this is my life now. <laughs> like, See, this is the thing. Yeah. You get a hobby and you get interested in doing it and more and more invested and you want to spend time doing it. And then suddenly, before you know it, it's your job. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, I think, yeah, you're, you're right about, you know, um, do something that brings you joy obviously you know it, it's it can be impossible potentially to do that but if you can you know hopefully you're going to live a really long life and we all say this to lots of the young people we work with hopefully your life's going to be really long <laughs> um you know and so surely you've got to do something that you, you love and that you're really passionate about you know and then there's that whole then you'll never work a day in your life that's not true but <laughs> oh no that's not true <laughs> that's um, work. do you know what though the thing is and I, I don't want to give any illusions here about the job that I do now I was not good at radio to start with. Like for the probably the first 2,500 hours that I did on air, I was not good, right? So if you're not good at something to start with, it doesn't mean to say that you'll never not be good at it. And, you know, now this is my six and a half year in radio. Yeah, I'm, I'm nearly up to seven years that I've been in the industry. I don't feel like I would probably be able to say, yeah, I'm okay at this until I got to maybe four or five years of being in it. And then at that point, I was like, Do you know what? I'm not too bad at this. Do you know what I'm being mean? But like at the start, I really wasn't good. Like I was lousy. I remember listening back to some of my first year of shows and thinking, oh, my goodness. Like, why did I do that? Why did I say that? I sound so embarrassing. Um, so, you know, with creative arts and stuff, it's exactly the same, whether you're interested in film, whether you're interested in script writing or anything like that your first few things are probably not going to be very good. You know, if you're like me, a radio presenter, your first few shows are not going to be very good. If you're a podcaster, first few shows, nah, forget it. You, But you have to do those hours to get good and to learn your craft. And if you've always got the passion to learn those things and to want to improve, you are going to move forward and you are going to improve. So I think that is really important to say here as well. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Um, we actually have... Um... Uh, a segment it's really great actually you're introducing lots of things that I can talk about the festival with but <laughs> we have a um a, a film screening night which I'm not gonna say the title of because it's a bit rude um but it's basically uh short films are crap show them anyway um <laughs> no not short films sorry first films are crap show them anyway um because people yeah you've got to make a film you've got to show it because that's film is about ultimately showing them you're scared it's not perfect as you say you've missed the story because you were looking at something pretty over there like you say um but you know share it get over it then you've shared the first one and you can move on to much better things um so if if people have got some rubbish rubbish first films out there they can actually submit them to us and we're going to show them at the university of northampton in the engine shed which will be really fun um but you're right like you've got to do stuff yeah, it's so true. And, you know, the other thing I do think is really important to mention, that if you are worried about entering this competition, you're thinking, I really can't show my first film or whatever. My first ever radio demo was in front of the five biggest people in the radio industry. And four of them absolutely hated me. Like within 10 <laughs> seconds, they were like, no, this is not for us. Pause, turn it off, turn it off. But one of them really liked it and saw some potential. And, you know, the one thing there is that he gave me feedback at what I was doing. And from there on, I just started to take that feedback on board and improve and improve. And I think that's one of the best ways to improve anything that you're doing is to get feedback on what you're doing. And the best way to get feedback is to just put yourself out there and to do it. You know, even though it's like scary as hell and you're like, oh, my God, I don't want people to see this. Like, actually, them seeing it and then you being able to see it with them sometimes through their eyes and your eyes will help you see what you could do better next time. And I think that's a really important thing to mention in any creative discipline, whatever it is. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can, I completely agree. And again, that's why we do these 48 hour things because no, you know, the, the pressure is kind of off because no one is expecting you to do a masterpiece in 48 hours. You know, it's going to be ropey. Like, <laughs> obviously you've made a film in 48 hours. Um, and yeah, I, 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 yeah, I feel like you've, 
you've summed up the reason that we exist quite well there. Um, <laughs> all that stuff. But um, well, and so what does the what we we usually kind of stick these to about twenty minutes. So what, I mean, what does the future hold for you? That's what's the next thing, and does any of it involve film? Um, I do you know what my dream, and this is a weird pipe dream, but. I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to manifest it into the universe because my last dream was to be on BBC Radio 1 and that's done now. So <laughs> my dream in film and documentary would actually be to do something like what you saw with the Kanye West documentary, to follow an artist round from the very start of their music career and to see how they grow and grow and grow over a period of time. Um, obviously, I will not be following around someone like Kanye West for 20 years or whatever, because I do not have that time and need to work nine to five. <laughs> However, um, the idea for me has always been to want to make a music documentary in film form. Um, so that kind of is probably something that I'd like to get involved with personally. Um, but outside of that, I think radio and audio documentary is something that I'd like to do more um however stuff I really enjoy is things like BBC Three when they do shorts and stuff like that you know shorts about different things that people don't have access to usually but can see into that world so I think there may be some film in my future um but my dream would be to do a music documentary amazing and actually I realize I've not we've not really talked about Northampton and Northamptonshire actually like um you know we I think, and I think because we, we've talked about this kind of previously, there's, you know, there's loads of exciting things going on here, but I'm not entirely sure that everyone always sees them. Um, and I'm just kind of interested, you know, we're Northampton Film Festival, kind of what your thoughts are on the kind of creative scene here in Northampton. Um, well, I'm quite fortunate in that because I do BBC Introducing in Northamptonshire, I get a real first look into the music scene here. And I know for a fact how strong that is. And I think it does really rival places like your Manchester's, your Leeds of the world, maybe even your Edinburgh's as well, that have massive thriving scenes. But North Ants is just like that. And, you know, you look at stuff like this, like Screen North Ants, like it's so great to see there's like a strong environment for filmmakers and creatives. You know, you see poets, there's opportunities there as well. And, you know, I work on this thing called BBC Upload on my evening show as well, which is every creative discipline except um, music, which goes to BBC Introducing, which is my regular show. So, like, I see script writers coming through. I see poets coming through. I see different people coming through with content. And you just see how much talent there is in the county. And, like, you know, you think, oh, I, I know everybody in music, for example, in the county. And then new people will appear out of nowhere and you'll be like, where have you been? Like, where have you been hiding? And, you know, I think that's the same in every discipline around here. Like, you think you might know everybody who works within that industry, but then somebody new pops up. So um, I just think it's such a great scene to be involved in. But, um, yeah, I do think it rivals cities. And, you know, it is my hometown. And other than going to uni in Nottingham, which I think is also fantastic scene-wise for creativity, um, I'd probably say it's one of the best scenes that I've been within, like in my life. And I, but obviously, I would say that because it's my hometown. So, um, but yeah, I do think it rivals places like that. Definitely. And so, if people are like, "No, there's no talent here," where would you say they should go and look? Where they'll just be flooded with either music or otherwise. Well, starting with music, definitely my BBC introducing show on a Saturday night, yeah. eight till ten. It's two hours of just local artists, basically up and coming local artists for you to look at and um, to listen to to look up um in terms of gigs and stuff as well there's places like the garibaldi uh, there's places like the black prince that are constantly putting on gigs for people um and also you know when it comes to you guys as well i'm always seeing you're running local events and stuff for creatives to get involved with so it just depends what you're interested in and you know search up what you're interested in because i guarantee you there'll be something for you to go to you know whether you're a student whether you're somebody who's really unsure of what they want to do or even somebody who's just doing creative stuff as a hobby like I think there's so many different hubs you just have to just search them up and if you're unsure and you're interested in something contact me because I'd have probably interviewed them on the radio about it so yeah absolutely brilliant well thank you very much um for that Kerry um I'm looking forward to seeing, I've I've obviously watched all of the entries to the film festival and I'm looking forward to seeing what the judges judge as our best films. It's, um, I always have my idea for the winner, but I unfortunately don't get a say. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. But yeah, thank you very much, Kerry. We always do a really awkward wave.
Mm, say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Um, so yes, that is our second judge that we have interviewed. Um, I think Jim Mooney of Emu Films is currently, um, I think he's filming abroad at the moment, so I don't know whether I'm going to get him, um, but obviously we're hoping that all of them will come and join us at some point during the festival. If you would, we, you've, all, most of our competitions have now closed, um, hence why Kerry is watching the films. Um, but if you have got a first film, um, it doesn't have to technically be your first film, but if you've not really entered a film festival, if you're like, oh, all my films are rubbish, um, the first films are crap. It's not called that. The first films are crap. Show them anyway. Segment. Basically, if you in, if you email info at northamptonfilmfestival.co.uk um, with your uh, link to your film, we will show every film we submitted as long as you come and watch it with us um, and as long as it's not completely obscene. Um, <laughs> so please send me links because it would be really nice to just show stuff. Get a little bit of that nice feedback. It's a really supportive event. Um, that hopefully means that your next film isn't crap. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do a weird little awkward wave now. Um, yeah, and hopefully see you all at the film festival.